How's it going everyone? This is K Collections. Today I will be unboxing the Caster Gilgamesh 1 8 scale figure by Orange Rouge. So here's the front of the box, and here is the side with our promotional image, the back with more images, and the other side after episode 5. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm happy I bought this. Here's the top, and here's the bottom. Caster Gilgamesh has easily become one of my most favorite Fate characters. Alright, so let's open this up. So here's the interior of the box, a nice summoning circle right there, and a few nice design all around. Starting with instructions, make sure to read this because you don't want to break anything. Next is the base. I really like this base because this resembles the stone flooring uh, because there are sculpting on the base itself. It's not just plain flat and it looks great. The sculpting has little bumps on it all around so you can actually fill it. That's wonderful. Even though it's plain, it resembles the floor and I'm okay with that. Next would be his axe, and god damn it, I really love the paintwork for this. This whole thing looks metallic, and I mean, obviously it's plastic, but it looks great. I especially love the sculpted work on the middle right there, on both sides, and the different tones of gold they use. On the handle, it's a darker tone of gold compared to this portion of the axe, and even the blade, it's in between silver and gold, like towards the back portion, it's gold fading into silver so that's wonderful right there and the blue section right there that's yeah, metallic as well or metallic painting so overall it's very very well done really happy about the weapon lastly here are two parts for his headpiece and uh, you're gonna have to attach this on the back so I'll do that a bit later well I got bad news folks my Gilgamesh lost his arm <laughs> which kinda sucks but I mean uh, it's not that big of a deal. I could put some super glue, but I guess they didn't use enough glue to attach it. I mean, I could just, you know, wedge it in there like that. I mean, it's sturdy enough, but one small tap and it just falls off. So, not the worst thing in the world. Like, I mean, I paid over a hundred bucks for this, so you kind of expect them to, <laughs> you know, avoid this kind of quality control issue, but not the biggest problem because it can be easily fixed and Thankfully, you can hide the glue residue, you know, just insert some glue in there and just attach it. So, not the biggest problem, but it's just a hassle to fix after paying so much money for it. Actually, this is pretty convenient. I'll talk about the tome. So, the scope book for the tome is pretty uh, simplistic, not too uh, complex. Now, the paints work, they had a brush-like effect using black uh, paints, I guess, um, to kind of shade the tome itself. But it's kind of inconsistent, like this top portion right here. That looks a bit ugly, in my opinion, and it's not on the other side, so I don't know if it's just, you know, them being sloppy or was it intentional, but whatever, it is what it is. Now, the painting for the, let me just see, light blue is a bit inconsistent as well, right? Some parts aren't completely filled out, you know, like right there, there's a gap or missing blue paint right there. So again, the whole tone is pretty sloppy, in my opinion. Here's the interior. I get what they're trying to do uh, with the paintbrush like effect, but it didn't really work out. But the arm, the metallic painting looks beautiful, that looks great. Alright, overall this figure looks great. I do have several complaints. It's not a perfect figure, but um, it's something I could live with. It's not too dramatic. First, I'm just going to remove this because I haven't glued it yet. I'll do so afterwards. I'm going to move this figure around a lot, so I don't want it to fall and, you know, damage the paint or anything. So first QC issue, or another QC issue I found, is that the plastic portion of the peg 
is misaligned, as you guys can tell, right? It's supposed to hide the plastic, but, <laughs> I mean, it just looks like he has two toes now. So, I don't know what to say about that. It looks kind of ugly, in my opinion. I was thinking about trying to, you know, shift it, the plastic, but it's attached firmly onto the base. It's, it's a hassle, so I don't want to damage the figure itself, so I'm just going to have to live with it. Now, another complaint is that it's not a big deal. It's more so nitpicking. The feathers on the back, it has this glossy plastic look to it. I mean, it looks really bad in my opinion. What they should have done is not went with a glossy paint. Instead, went with a matte finish and shade the feathers individually. You know, that way it looks a lot better. But as you guys can see, it looks like a big lump of plastic. So, doesn't look great there. But it's on the back, that's okay. Now, for his headpiece, I do wish there were more shading. I mean, it's on the back, so you won't see it. But, you know, some small details can be appreciated sometimes, you know. And back to the front, he just looks awkward like that, <laughs> he's missing an arm. But uh, other than those several issues, I'm okay with the overall figure. I love the shading on the pants, that looks great. Even the sculpting for his clothing, or I mean, lack of clothing, you know what I meant. <laughs> so the sculpt work on the pants is great, you know, wrinkles, folds, it has this nice natural look to it. Um, this blue portion is sculpted as well, actually no, it's not sculpted, it's... um. The lines, that's just painted on. There's no sculpting whatsoever. Uh, so, his face, to me, it seems like his facial structure is a bit on the long side, but I don't have an image to you know, directly compare it. I'll do that later, but it's, I'm just going off of memory here. And I do like his uh, you know, painting on the eyes, you know, that red eye glaring at your soul. <laughs> that's great right there. And this portion, I guess the um, gem on his forehead, that's uh, painted. It's not an individual sculpted, um, I guess, piece. So that kind of sucks there. And I do wish there were more shading on his hair, but that's okay. All right, for size comparisons, here's him next to Edmund Dantes, another 1 8 scale. Beautiful figure, by the way. Pick this up if you haven't yet. It's wonderful. So they look in scale with each other. Next would be another 1 8 scale comparison. This one's Emiya, another great figure, although I think it's sold out, so you can't pick it up unless you buy on eBay, Amazon, or some kind of aftermarket or seller. And finally, here's a comparison with a 1 7th scale figure. Now, keep in mind the base is on a higher level than Gilgamesh's, so, I mean, obviously this will be a taller, but they don't fit in scale to each other. I said this multiple times on my videos, but just kind of look at the scaling of the head, or the size of the head, if they <laughs> one seventh scale will have a bigger head than a one eighth. So that's kind of how you determine if they can scale in with each other. Because let's be honest, sometimes one eighth scales on their larger portion can't fit in with the one seventh scale. As um, I know there's figure, but the Mordred with the armor, she fits well with one seventh. So my final thoughts on this figure, it's all right. It's not the greatest, it's not the worst. There are definitely great things about this figure, specifically the Mattel gold painting and his axe. Those things really stand out. Uh, skull work is pretty simplistic, you know, some wrinkles on his clothing. Uh, now the issues I have with this figure are mainly the QC issues. Uh, but that's more so because I'm lucky. God damn it. I wish my gotcha luck was this great because I was reading through comments on my figure collection uh, There hasn't been any complaints about the arm falling off or the misalignment on the pegs. So again, I'm just that lucky uh, My other complaints would be the tome the paintbrush effects was a bit sloppy and the feathers on his back Wish they kind of uh, had a matte finish instead of a glossy finish to it. But other than that, I definitely recommend this. Now, I'll be completely honest with you, I would not spend over like 170 for this. I believe it's around 170, 180. That's the retail price. I bought this for around 150. That's shipping included, so it's more so on the cheap end. So I can't really complain too much about it since I got it for cheaper. But if you are planning to get this. I'd say, you know, don't spend more than 170 It's not worth, not worth it at that point. There are two other Gilgamesh figures that are coming out. Now, I don't know the price point, but uh, there's one that's him sitting on the throne, created by Mega House, I believe. And another smaller scale, it's not even a scale figure, it's more so like 7 inches or so of him shooting his uh, weapons through the gates of Babylon. So, those two are, I may pick them up, but as of right now, uh, let's hope... You know, they make more Caster Gilgamesh figures in the future because he's one of the 
best characters, especially episode 5. That was great, but if you really need a figure of him right now, hey, pick this up. Special thanks to all my patrons for supporting me. If you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more fate content. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and join my Discord server. All links are in the description. Have an awesome day, everyone. Till next time.